Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my account statements series. If you haven't watched part one yet, go watch that first. You'll find a link down below. Then come on back. You're holding up class. Go on. Get out of here. Go watch it. All right. So yesterday we got a lot done. We built the report up to this point here. Um, I think after looking at it, I'm also going to get rid of that line that I put in there. I don't, I don't like the way it looks. But first off, we also have to fix our totals down here, right? Now, this right now is a total for everything. I want a total for each of these sections. So let's go back into here, design view. And yeah, I'm going to get rid of that one. I don't like it. I forgot that these guys have borders around them. So I like the, the way it looks like that. All right. So we're going to take this stuff out of the report footer. Actually, I'm just going to copy it. So let's copy all of this. And oh, you know what? We don't need separate debit and credit in here, do we? No, we do not. Let's see. Yeah, we don't need debit credit, just amount. Right, just amount. So design again. I don't know why I didn't do this last time, but there we go. Get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of you. Um, we'll just expand the description here out to there. There we go. Okay. Now I do want this amount up in here in the title footer so I get a, a total for each section, right? So I'm going to copy that with its line. Copy, click in here, paste. We're going to slide you over there like that. Okay. And is it just, it's a bit too far over. Let's bring it, okay, yeah, we'll bring you over too. Sometimes you don't see these until you look at them closely. You can leave a little bit of extra space in here if you want to. Maybe bold this one, right, make it darker. So format, shape outline, thickness, a little bit thicker just so you can see, hey, that's the total. All right, let's save it. Let's take a look at what we got. Okay, looking good, 1,200 there, 1,570 there seems about right. Now this isn't correct. So what we have to do is, we have to take this, the, the sum of the credits, and subtract the sum of the debits, right? I don't want to add all these things up. So let's modify this guy. Go to data. It's not going to be sum of amount. It's going to be the sum of credit. Let me zoom in so you can see it. Shift F2. Sum of the credit minus the sum of the debit. Okay? And yes, I, you don't need to put these little brackets in here because you don't have any spaces in your field names like good little programmers. In fact, I usually remove these, but Access puts them back in there for you anyway. Makes it easier for beginners to understand. Okay. All right. Save it. Close it. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Okay. Ready? Let's take a peek. Right-click, print preview, and looks good. That looks correct. Looks like we had more money going out this month than coming in. Maybe some titles in here, right? Some of debits, some of credits, and then total. That'd be nice. So I'm going to put this in a text box. I'm going to grab any one of these. Grab description. That's fine. Copy, paste, and we'll put it right here. And maybe about that big. Open her up. Now, we don't want this guy bound to description anymore, right? So we're going to come in here, and the control source is going to be equals. Let me zoom in again. Shift F2. Equals sum of and title. Right? Title is a field that either says debits or credits. That's perfect, right? Looks good. And we'll put in here, uh, let's put in here title, total, whatever you want to call it. Just give it a good name. Okay. And then down below here, we'll just put total. You could use a label for that. You don't have to make it a text box for that one. That just says total. Slide you down here. So change that to total. Uh, if you want to right align these, that's fine. Whatever you want to do. There you go. Maybe make this guy bold. And see, these aren't exactly the right size. That's one of my pet peeves. They don't automatically come in on the grid. Let's see. Right click, snap, or size to grid. There we go. Let me do these ones too. While we're at it, right click, size to grid. I know it's off your screen. That's a beginner thing. You should know that. Save it, close it, right click, print preview. Okay. Whoopsie. Looking pretty good. Yeah, that's stupid borders. I know. All right, right click, design view, view and view, format, outline, transparent. Okay, what else do we need? Well, next we need a way to add some date criteria to this, okay? Because right now, I'm just seeing all the records in my form. In fact, let me, uh, let me update the dates in here. It's currently May 8th of 2024. So let me back this up to, uh, let's go 420 on that one. Let's go, uh, let's see, 421. I'm just going to make these a little more current. Let's go for 23. 
actually let's put uh let's back this up to march so 325 because we want it to be before our our valid date range let's make you 425 i'll go 426 and then we'll just change this one so they're a little bit out of date so five two if we do a monthly i want to see them right and then a five four okay so if we want last month's statement we should just see these ones right from april okay now, the easiest way to do this with a report like this is to put your criteria on a form, okay? You could put it on this form and then hit a button to open it, but I think that sometimes gets confusing because, uh, you know, you'll have different criteria down here. You'll still see all of them up here. You could change the filters. I mean, it just gets crazy. So this is where a menu comes in very, very handy. You could put it on a main menu. You could make a report menu, right? Somewhere else where you have the criteria and then when you click the button the form provides the criteria if you don't know how to do this go watch this video it shows how to get a value from an open form all right here i have a little form it's got just a state in it you click the button and it provides the criteria to this query okay go watch this video find a link down below now i just happen to have a nice little form main menu already set up in my tech help free template you guys i'm sure have seen this one come on open up come on there it is this guy all right, I'm just gonna grab the main menu out of here, click and drag and drop it in this one. Okay, that's it. Okay, you're done, bye. Here's the main menu. <laughs> All right, and it's got buttons open to customer formula, which these things don't exist. So let's just go in here, design view. I'm gonna close you for now. Okay, we don't need these buttons because those things don't exist. I'm not gonna use this status box, we'll make that nice and small, but what I do need are some buttons to open up the check register form and then some criteria for my statement. Okay, so let's, uh, you know what, let's delete this. I promised I was going to do this without any programming because normally you just throw a line of VBA code in there, but let's create a button, form design, command button, drop you here. All right, we're going to go form operations, open a form. We're going to open the check register form. We're going to show all the records and then for text, we'll put in here, check register form. Okay, check reg form button. And there you go. There's my open the check register form just to make sure that it works. There you go. Okay. Now we need criteria for our statement. So we already have one little box here with a date in it. This is just a text box. All right. And we'll put over here. Let's say this will be the start date. All right. Now I'm going to open you up. I don't want today's date in here. You could start with today's date if you want. Let's name this, by the way, let's name this start date. All right. Now, instead of it being today's date, let's say by default, you are always printing out last month's statement. All right. So wouldn't it be nice if this box would default to the first day of last month? Huh? Wouldn't that be cool? Well, how do you do that? Well, I just happen to have a video. It's called first day of the month. How do you find the first day of the month? Last day of the month, the first day of next month, the last day of next month, the first day of the previous month, and all those different things are on this page. Isn't that cool? That's why it, it makes sense to watch all my videos, right, Sammy? <laughs> Sammy's one of my moderators, and he's on a quest to watch all of my tech help videos. I think he's up to, like, what, 2022 now, Sammy? <laughs> Anyways, if you go to the page for this class, look at this. Oh, here we go, right down here, usage. All right, first day of the previous month is right there. So we're going to copy this. The only change you have to make to it is if you want the actual previous month, you got to replace D with the date function. That's it. All right, so we're going to copy that. We're going to come up here, and in this control source, I'm going to shift F2, zoom in. All right, I'm going to say this is equal to that function, but all we got to do is replace D, which is a date, with the date function. All right, and what that will do is it'll put today's date in there. So now our start date, if I close this and reopen it, will default to the first day of last month. And like I said, it's currently May 8th, so that's the first day of last month. Isn't that cool? All right, let's do the end date. Copy, paste. Oh, get over there. Okay, end date. And we'll call you end date. And what's the function? Let's take a look at the page. It's going to be the last day of the previous month, which is right there. And yes, I have a whole separate video on date serial if you want to learn more about how this thing works. I'll put a link down below. So just copy that formula. We're gonna come into here. I'm gonna shift F2 to zoom in. We're gonna replace that with this. Replace these with today's date. 
like so. Hit OK. We're going to save it, close it, open it, and there we go. There's our criteria. Now we're cooking with gas. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. Now we just have to feed these dates into our report when we open it up, and we'll cover that in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow for part three. Same bad time, same bad channel. Or, of course, if you remember, you can watch it right now because I'm about to record it in about two minutes. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about how that date serial function works, go watch this. And if you do a lot of work with dates and times, I have several lessons in my expert series where I cover all the different date time functions and I put them all together in one seminar called the date time seminar. All right, covers everything you ever want to know about working with dates in access, date, uh, work days and, and holidays and uh, all kinds of time date calculations, you name it. That's covered in this date time seminar. Lots and lots and lots about dates and times and reminders and pop-ups and you, it's all how to figure out holidays and it's all in here. It's, it's, like the, it's like ragu. It's in there. Or is that prego? One of those spaghetti sauces. I don't remember. All right, but that's going to do it for part two. That's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part three. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and Everybody else who helps out on the site, I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. 
Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.